Hi, I'm Corey from IDParts.com and in this video we're going to replace the actuator on this VNT15. This turbo is obviously out of a car. You can do this on the car. It's a little bit harder, but we've got it off the car. That way you can see what I'm doing. It's the same process for a VNT17 or a 1722 hybrid. It's pretty easy and we can do it just in a few minutes. First thing we'll need to do is take a small flathead screwdriver or a pick tool and remove the circlip that holds the end of the actuator to the turbocharger vane lever. Well, the circlip just went flying, but that's pretty normal. Don't be too stressed out. If you get an actuator from us at ID Parts, we include a new circlip for you. That way you don't have to spend an hour looking for the old one. Now that the circlip is off, we'll continue removing the actuator. The next thing we need to do is remove the two 10 millimeter nuts that hold the actuator to the bracket. With the nuts out of the way, we can slide the actuator off, put it to the side. We have the old heat shield here that we took off the old actuator, and we have to put that on the new actuator before installing it on the turbo. You'll find a small vent hole right here on the outside of the actuator, and that's going to be protected by this shield. Simply slide the shield over, line up the two holes for the nuts, and that's all there is to that. You also want to be sure that this lock nut and the adjusting screw is also loose and easy to turn. It's going to be harder to turn and adjust when the thing is installed on the turbocharger, so we can free them up now and maybe add a little bit of lubrication to make it easier once we install it. But with those in place, we'll go ahead and put the, the actuator here on the turbocharger bracket. When we do that, we want to line up the bracket with the exhaust side of the turbo. This bracket is kind of like a heat shield, and the exhaust side is going to be the hotter end of the turbo, so it needs to protect it from that. First thing we need to do is catch the actuator lever, catch the arm of the actuator on the vane lever, and then second, line up the two studs and push that into place. Once we're done with that, we'll just catch these two nuts to be sure the thing doesn't fall off. Once we have the nuts caught, we'll take the turbocharger actuator circlip and slide that on over the arm. Now tighten up these nuts here. All right, with the nuts tightened down and the actuator arm attached to the lever, we will now go through adjusting the actuator to be sure it's within the proper response. To adjust the actuator, we're going to use a Mighty Vac. It's a small hand-powered vacuum pump with a gauge on it. That way we can see how much vacuum we're applying to the actuator and watch how it moves. We haven't tightened down this lock nut yet because we're going to have to adjust it, but we'll see where the actuator is right now. Attach the Mighty Vac to the actuator and we'll do some hand pumping here. What we're looking for is to see when the actuator starts moving and how much vac vacuum it takes for the actuator to reach the turbocharger stop, which is right here. Now, on this turbocharger, we just noticed that while it moves originally, we could never get it to touch the, the stop, which means that the actuator is too long. If you want the, the actuator to touch the stop earlier, you need to shorten the actuator. If, you want, if it touches the stop too early, you need to lengthen the actuator. That translates to boost as well. If your car is under boosting, you'll need to shorten the actuator. If your car is over boosting, you'll need to lengthen the actuator. The more that lever is moved, the more boost the turbocharger will create.
We'll adjust the actual rotor by first just moving the lock nut a little bit out of the way. And we'll rotate the adjuster on the actuator. All right, we just took about two threads up. We want to test again. One or two threads can make a pretty big difference in this adjustment. So check before you go too far. Not connected. That's pretty close to perfect. We're at about 18 inches of mercury on the gauge and we're nearly at the stop. I'm gonna take one more thread out and test it one more time. Perfect, 18 inches of mercury, it hit the stop. That's right where I want it to be. Anywhere between 15 and 18 is good. 18 is a little bit more on the safe side though. So I'm gonna set that at 18 and leave it. Once we have the adjustment set, we'll just tighten down that lock nut. You don't need too much tightness on it. You can damage the thing pretty easily. So just tighten it down enough that way the arm won't move. All right, with the lock nut tight, I'm just gonna double check these two here again one more time. That's it. In this video, we replaced this actuator, we adjusted it using a Mighty Vac, and we're good to go. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to this channel to get all the new videos in your, in your inbox, and send me an email, sales at idparts.com, if you have any questions. Thanks again for watching.